Hello, everyone. It's Mr. Spectacular. Welcome to Technically Speaking and welcome to Blockchain Sensei, UK's number one trading and investing channel. If you're new here, make sure to have a look around. There's something for everyone. There's trading, NFTs, crypto, stocks, real estate, you name it, it's here. So if you find this information useful, make sure to subscribe and smash the like button. Now, guys, things have been happening. The last couple of months, markets have been boring. But based on what I'm seeing here, things are about to kick off. Now, before we get into the specifics of it, let me put out a massive disclaimer. None of this is financial advice. You should treat this as information and potentially a little bit of entertainment only. If you're looking for financial advisors, this is not me. I'm just a guy on the internet talking about charts and numbers and magic internet money. So if you need financial advice, speak to a professional. And let me throw out my Polish disclaimer. Don't be an idiot and don't invest like an idiot because you can lose your money. There's people out there who will gladly take it. So if you don't know how to use it properly, hey, it's going to be gone. Now that we have this stuff out of the way, let's look at what's been happening in the markets. So as you can see from this chart here, the S&P 500 has had a pretty, pretty nice move up here. Now, what has been the cause of it? Let's look at a couple articles. One, there's an article here on Bloomberg. By the way, don't you find it interesting how these massive financial sites have to advertise wheelbarrows and shit? Anyway, we've had our CPI numbers released this past Wednesday on the 10th of August. As of this moment, this is the 13th, Saturday. So the Federal Reserve has released the CPI numbers, which came in at 8.5%. Lower than expected, which we're expecting 9.1%. And look, this is still bad. This is very, very, very bad. Inflation is out of hand. However, it is less bad than it was expected. So by default, by contrast as well, it created a bit of optimism and hope in the markets that the bottom might be in. And we might be getting a new bull run and that the Fed will start printing money again. Um, in case you haven't watched any of the previous episodes of this show, let me just run over this real quick. So this entire massive bull run that we've had from March of 2020 all the way up to the highs over here has been caused largely by the printing of new money. About, I believe, 40% of U.S. dollars currently in circulation have been printed in 2020, which they gave away as stimulus checks to keep people at home. Anyway, let's not get political. Let's stay on the topics of money. Now, the drop that we've had here, one of the reasons that it started was because Fed started to reverse their monetary policy and they started to increase interest rates, thereby making that's more expensive, essentially. Uh, we've had a couple of these rate increases. And because of the inflation numbers that just came in, there was quite a bit of hope that they might start reversing that policy and start printing again, which would send the markets going up. Now, let's keep that in mind while we look at a few other things. So there's another article on Forbes about the pressures on the Fed and most for most likely they will not start printing again. They will keep putting um, the interest rates up. Uh, there's this quote here. Unfortunately, there's no sign the Federal Reserve will change its mind and agree with investors. Obviously, you want to make money that rates should come down again next year. So most likely, they will keep increasing the rates, thereby bringing the markets lower, which one way or the other, however this plays out, there is massive opportunity. Because if we go up from here, perfect, we make money. If we go down from here, 
perfect because we can buy things a lot cheaper than make money just a bit later. Another major event that's happened this week that also for me personally is a sign to, to play this cautiously is the big boys at BlockRock launched a Bitcoin private trust, essentially enabling their investors to invest in Bitcoin. They're also looking at other coins, assets, stable coins, stuff like that. If you want to read this entire article, uh, just Google um, Google BlackRock and crypto. I'm sure it's going to pop up. But the fact that they're getting in, it's for me, it's a sign to really, really, really be cautious because these guys have have some really big money to swing around. So let's look at the charts and what's been what's been happening. So the way the way I like to strategize my moves now and analyze the markets is I start with the Fed policy because they're they're gonna control pretty much everything. So start with the Fed, then look at the stocks, mainly the S P, then look at Bitcoin. Then look at everything else because that is the order in which they will control the movements. So if you look at what the S&P is doing, most likely Bitcoin is going to follow. If Bitcoin follows, Ethereum, BNB, Sol, AVAX, ADA, all the other stuff, they're most likely going to follow as well. So the S&P has had a pretty nice run up here. Let's look at the percentage. So let's try again. Nope. No, come on, man. This thing's not cooperating. All right, let's try again. Boom, boom. So we're up 14, 15%. In terms of uh, an index that's in the billions, that's that's quite a lot. So looking at the heat map, we're not totally, totally overheated yet, but RSI is pretty high, and if we go into some lower time frames, no, didn't want to do that. On the hourly, we're getting pretty overheated, though we've been overheated for quite a while now, so there's no reason why this wouldn't keep going up for a little bit longer. However, RSI, again, high as hell. So we are due for a pullback. Now, as long as we don't break this market structure level here, the uptrend might still continue. My personal thesis is that we are going to continue up for a little bit longer just to trigger that reflexivity and that massive, massive FOMO. Because remember, if if you've watched any of our past episodes, I talk about this a lot. There's the idea that we're all going to make it, we're all going get to get rich, we're all going to make money. It's nonsense. This is a zero-sum game. For somebody to win, somebody has to lose. And the big boys don't care about being philanthropic. They don't care about retail. They don't care about you or me. They care about making money, and so should we. So this is, really, this is warfare. This is this is combat. And you don't want to telegraph your moves and make them obvious so that the, your enemy can predict them. You want to be unpredictable. You want to set up a trap. It's like in martial arts. You don't just throw a straight telegraphed punch. You set it up. You throw a couple of distraction jobs and then you load up the big one when your opponent's not expecting it. And also one thing you need to remember is, let's look at Bitcoin specifically in this case. Let's switch this heat map off. We're not gonna need it. If you'd bought Bitcoin at this bottom here, 18k 
which personally, let me be clear, I didn't. I bought a bit around 20K. But let's say you got in at 18, 18.2K. You'd, you'd be up 35%. That's a good return. On Bitcoin alone, that is a good return. However, the sentiment over here, and especially for the average retail investor who, who doesn't really spend any time on their, on their education, they just look at what's, what's trending on Twitter and invest based on that. Over here, Bitcoin's too risky because you think it's going to zero or it's going to 10K. But if Bitcoin were to reach 30K, then all of a sudden it's a brilliant investment because, wow, it's going to 100K. And they will get in, forgetting that if it were 30K, somebody's up 70% and they become their exit liquidity. Because look, if you're operating with a grand, eh, you make 70%, okay, you made 700, boohoo. But if you're operating with 10 billion, you make 70%, 700 million is not about, it's not about paycheck, yeah? So even though, yeah, it's primarily operating based on percentages, remember there's people throwing around big, big money. So, just checking my notes, guys, making sure we're on track. So let's look at a couple other things before we dig it deeper into the, the Bitcoin charts. So the dollar index, again, pumped up to 109, had this retracement here. The key two key levels I'm watching is 104 and 103. If we can break, if this can drop below those two, we might still have a bit of a run in the crypto and stock markets. Volatility index, again, it has been dropping which has allowed the markets to continue going up. If if we were to see any sharp increases, like the ones here, the ones here, that for me would be a sign that, okay, things are about to start cracking again. It might be a good idea to take at least some money off the table. Now back into the crypto world, Ethereum, it's got a... Uh, Transition to proof of stake coming up on the 15th of September. And it has been outperforming Bitcoin quite significantly. We are approaching the top of this range, though, right here that it's been in for the last, well, since May 2021, pretty much. However, in terms of the macro view, there is still a possibility for this thing to go up a bit bit higher if we look at the weekly that goes back to like 2016 2017 there's there's quite a bit higher that we could go technically but again it all depends on this whether we can break above and form a new high over here and then again if ethereum were to keep going up a lot of alts, especially ones that are, let's say, related to Ethereum, are likely to follow. But let's let's analyze Bitcoin real quick because that's gonna be the big daddy that's gonna determine where this this crypto thing is going to go. Which chart do I need? Make it this one. Yeah, this one. There we go. So a couple, couple things that will be relevant to us. Again, it's it's followed pretty closely to what the S&P has been doing. But we are at the moment stuck at this level here, just around 24.5K. If we can close above this level, 
chances are we're still going to keep going up for a little bit. Like if you look on the RSI, it is pretty high, but it's in mid 60s. There is a bit higher that we can go. Obviously, as of this moment, this is Saturday, Saturday evening as well. So there won't most likely won't be a whole lot of action on the weekend. However, start of the week, Monday, Tuesday, if we can close above here, there is a still a slight possibility this thing is going to go up a bit more. I mean, look, I don't, I don't find it unrealistic for Bitcoin to go into the 30s even reaching 32 in the short term because in the long term i see this thing going down mainly because of the fed policy because they're not gonna stop increasing the rates they will continue they will continue because their main priority is bringing inflation down because like i've said before they don't care about the markets as much as they care about staying in power. At the end of the day, it's all politics. And the majority of people who vote, they have less than a grand in savings. And all they care about is the prices of the supermarket, which continue to go up every single time they go to buy a steak. So for the short term, I think we might still have a bit of a potential to go up. However, I'll be watching this thing very closely. And my finger is literally on the sell trigger. I'm not uh, I'm not planning to buy to make any long term buys here. Potentially, some short term trades, but again, I've got a couple of those running already, uh, which are approaching my take profit levels. So. I'm watching this closely and if this thing breaks out of here, brilliant, awesome, happy days. But I'll be, I'll be looking for the time when it starts to starts to reverse. And then come end of the year, Maybe start of 2023, some real, real bargains are about to show up. I think I could be wrong. Hey, like I said, this is just me talking. But if we look at the macro, so that was our peak in 2018, 19 and well, 19-ish K. We've already hit that, but I don't see why we wouldn't go to 13 or even 10 or as low as 8 grand per Bitcoin at some point. Maybe this year, maybe early next year. So keep in mind, there's been quite a bit of positive news. The inflation numbers, BlackRock getting in. Also, one thing that I found worrying is Jim Cramer is starting to say, guys, go buy Ethereum. I wish I don't have the tweet right now, but it is it is, it, it is online if you want to look it up. And uh, yeah, historically, it's been a good idea to counter trade whatever this guy is saying. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's just take a quick look at Funding rate and the crypto fear and greed index. And we're going to wrap it up. So right now we are at 46. Still in fear, but hey, last week we were, last week we were at 31. And only last month we were at 18. One, one idea that I'd like to keep in mind is People see red candles, they get PTSD. People see green candles, they get amnesia. They forget how bad it was not so long ago. And they get into 
especially crypto people, because everybody's just used to ridiculous games. Uh, they're like, yeah, bull runs back on. Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, we're here right now. Just last week, we were here. And hey, not so long ago, we were in the depths of depression over here. Now, if we look closely, you will find that funding pretty much confirms it. Come on, load. There we go. To get rid of this. There we go. We got what we needed. Everyone's pretty much pretty much going long. Yeah, there was a bunch of shorts over here, which they've either closed or gotten squeezed out on this run up here. I don't think there's been enough pain in the markets overall. And if we keep with the philosophy of maximum pain and maximum annihilation, let's say, I think the way the big words are going to play it is going to run this up a bit more and then just deploy a, mac a massive nuclear nuke. Um, but hey, I could be wrong. I suppose we'll have to watch and see how this plays out. I wish I had a crystal ball. But hey, if you watch The Wolf of Wall Street, you know. Nobody knows which way it's going to go. We can only make the most educated guesses and estimations that we can. So that's my thoughts on what's going on. Hope you have enjoyed this episode. Make sure to smash the like button, drop a comment below. And if you find this sort of information useful, uh, check out our links below. So check out our Instagram at Blockchain Sensei for all the most recent updates on what's happening in the markets. If you want to watch the moves that I'm making, whether it's long-term buys or short-term trades or just a more regular updates on what's going, in the, going on in the markets, check out our trading inner circle the link for that is in the description below also we have some free ebooks as well as premium ebooks for intro to crypto and nfts links for those are in the description below and if you are new to crypto or you've just been around for a while but you don't really have a structure to what you're doing yet uh, there is also some free training that i've put together for you the link for that is in the description as well. Just to be fully transparent, there is an offer at the end of it for a product that we don't really offer in the public because you have to talk to us to be able to get it. It's a bit more exclusive. But the training in itself will be valuable because it will go over a few different traps and pitfalls that people fall into in crypto that just cause them to, to get wrecked and, and lose money. So in itself... The training will be valuable because it will, it will map out a strategy for you of the, the different components you need to put together to, to do this thing properly. So check those out, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Have a spectacular day. And until next time.